Hi, this is Dr. Richard Ruling here to welcome you on the Total Health Channel. Thank you for being with us from time to time. I want to thank you especially for telling your friends. Uh, looks like yesterday, five new subscribers. I was just thinking that if if the year goes by with five every day, we would just about double our 888. Uh, that, uh, that's a, that's about, uh, you know, eight is the number of new beginnings in the Bible, so uh, let's make a new beginning. <laughs> God bless you. Let's uh, bow our hearts, and as I bow in prayer, thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, this opportunity, uh, another week. Please help us, uh, help us to see things as you do, and bless this title as we present it today with uh, your servant Ellen White, and uh, help us to uh, not uh, misuse her in our misunderstanding. And uh, thank you for clarity in your Holy Spirit. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs> well, uh, I submitted an article to, uh, uh, and I often do, to Spectrum, Fulcrum, and uh, Ministry Magazine, and have yet to have them want to publish anything. Uh, sadly, uh, they uh, take excuses. Uh, you know, the, the recent thing about uh, um, things pointing to uh, a few years from now, uh, when I say that, it doesn't sound so bad. Uh, if I say 2022, oh, you can't do that. That's time setting, you know. Well, uh, Ellen White has an interesting article, article on uh, beware of any time setting uh, in, in uh, three selected messages. No, one selected message, page 185. It's um, uh, titled, um, It is not for you to know the times and seasons. That was her sermon in uh, 19, I'm sorry, 1891, 1891, um, September. And um, we quote it a lot. It's quoted, uh, uh, it's not for you to know the times or seasons. Sounds pretty conclusive. Well, we, we need to look at the context, all right? Uh, those words were addressed by Christ to the disciples in Acts uh, 1, verse 6. And it wasn't for them to know. Uh, they had failed him, okay? Their time was over, and he was about to leave. Uh, they, if they had watched and prayed on the evening of uh, Passover, it might have been different, because if you remember, um, James and John wanted to be uh, on the right and left in his kingdom. And he said, it's not for uh, me to say, but can you drink of the cup and, uh, that I drink of? And uh, they said, yes, we can. And he gave him the cup the last night. And then a little later, though, when he asked them to watch and pray, they couldn't drink of the cup. They went to sleep. If they had watched and prayed, they could have been strengthened, perhaps, by the angel, uh, like he was strengthened after he collapsed. And um, he, he um, could have had witnesses at his trial. When they, they accused him of just wanting to destroy the temple and build it in three days, they could have said, no, he's talking about his body. Come out Sunday morning. You'll see. And uh, there could have been witnesses Sunday morning so that the Jewish leaders could not have lied. Pentecost could have seen the whole nation in repentance. And if so, my uh, that stone kingdom in Daniel 7 might have been formed then. You know, it's cut out of a mountain, grows to fill a whole... Uh, the mountain grows to fill the whole earth. And might have been, might have been uh, at that time if they had not failed him. But So it was not for them to know they'd had their chance, basically. But uh, um, we are failing to see, uh, first of all, that phrase, that times and seasons, comes one more time at first in, in Daniel 2.21. is talking about the external kingdom. He said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Blessed are you, you know, poor spirit, meek, merciful. But uh, um, he's all, there's, a, there's a double kingdom, a kingdom that they want to see restored when, when God did mighty things for Israel. Okay, they were looking for that. And the times and seasons for setting it up is stated in um, Daniel 2.21. And he says, not for you to know when that is. But Paul, one more time, takes that same phrase in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1. He says, uh, of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write you, for you know perfectly. The day of the Lord comes, and that's the day of the Lord is the end time period, comes as a thief in the night when they're saying peace and safety. Sudden destruction comes on them as travail on a woman with child. Now that last phrase, travail on a woman with child, should get our attention uh, because we're failing to understand. That was, that was Egypt. Egypt travailed with God's firstborn in 
Exodus 4:21 or 22, God calls Egypt my first. Um, he calls Israel my firstborn. Okay, and uh, Egypt travailed in uh, agony, really, trying to birth <laughs> Israel. They didn't want to let them go, but uh, God took them anyway. And uh, the, they formed a kingdom when they went to Sinai. They said, and God said, if you keep my kingdom, you'll be. I mean, if you keep my covenant, you'll be a kingdom. And he also later said, uh, I'm married to you. So they, they, it was a bridegroom situation. And so we got two uh, messages, a time of judgment and the bridegroom coming. And judgment is deserved by this country because it's worse than Egypt. Egypt killed uh, maybe a few hundred, maybe a few thousand babies of Israel. But this country has aborted 60 million. And we've enslaved most people far worse than Egypt with alcohol, tobacco, drugs, Caffeine, for example, and legal drugs, that, well, prescription drugs, which are a leading cause of death. I have a website, leading cause of death prescription drugs dot com. Okay, so a bad situation. God is going to execute judgment. Billy Graham uh, thought God was uh, delayed and would have to apologize to Sodom, but no apology needed. It's coming, and so uh, uh, trouble. Uh, and Ellen White saw this. I think uh, it's just that she couldn't write clearly. Uh, Acts 7.52, Stephen says to the Jews when he was about to be stoned, one of the last things he said was, um, which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? Well, Ellen White was a prophet and she was persecuted. She was no exception. Uh, when James, I'm sorry, when um, um, A.T. Jones and E.J. Wagner uh, gave a message of righteousness by faith in 1888, Ellen White went with them to camp meetings uh, to help boost that image. But the brethren uh, who didn't receive that message of 1880 wanted to break it up and they asked her to go to Australia to get rid of her. So uh, that's the church uh, that we, our uh, leadership, etc., that uh, we esteem highly in our day, but they persecuted the prophets. And in our day, her t last title was changed so we don't get it, okay? I was in White Estate about 10 years ago, and downstairs in a glass case at the far right, with all of her books, was the last one that she wrote, The Captivity and Restoration of Israel, a blue title, now a blue cover with gold letters. I said, what's this? They said, oh, that's Prophets and Kings. We just changed the title. Well, I have my mother's edition from 1917. It's called Prophets and Kings, but the title page says um, the... Um, Captivity and Restoration of Israel uh, as illustrated in the experience of prophets and kings. Or maybe it was vice versa. Anyway, prophets and kings as illustrated in the experience of the captivity and restoration of Israel. And her title, though, which we're, we're not seeing, was a scriptural message. It was from Jeremiah 30, verse 3. Lo, the days come, God says, I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah and cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers and they shall possess it. Verse 11 says, I'm with you to save you, though I make a full end of all other nations. And we should be thinking about the image of Daniel 2. All nations ground to powder by a stone kingdom. And uh, I don't want to be here when the full end is made. I want to be where God, God has a kingdom. Okay, And... Uh, um, the last verse of that chapter, Jeremiah 30, says, In the latter day you'll consider, and the next phrase is, uh, at the same time. At the same time, latter day, God is going to gather his people from the north country, which is Babylon, the coast, the lame, the blind, the woman with child, a great company will return thither or there. King James, the language is a little hard to understand. And uh, it says your, your children will come again from the land of the enemy. They'll come to their own border in verses 16 and 17. That's the context of the new covenant promise. Well, if we want to be a covenant, um, and let me just say this. Uh, in that book by Ellen White, she puts the church like Israel. She says what God purposed to do for the world through Israel, uh, he will finally accomplish through his church on earth today, even his covenant-keeping people. So Israel is a covenant-keeping people in the end time is the church, okay? And she says, and to them will be fulfilled all the covenant promises made by Jehovah to that ancient people. Well, if all the covenant promises are going to be fulfilled, I plan to be a covenant-keeping person and go to the, uh, the Middle East, okay? Because that's what the covenant promises were about. It was the promised land. 
And if God is going to make a full end of all their nations, I don't want to be here when the full end is made. We should want to be where God has a movement. And that's not here, okay? And uh, we should be looking forward to it, trying to understand how it comes. And frankly, uh, that uh, next chapter in Jeremiah 31 is, is how we can really be saved. Because the new covenant promise to write his law in our hearts is essential before the second coming. We won't be ready to go to heaven if we don't have that fulfilled. And the context is that I'm going to gather you there, okay? So, uh, surprise to most Adventists. Uh, new truth, maybe, yes. I, Ellen White says in every age there's a new development of truth, a message of God to the people of that generation. Old truth is all essential. New truth is not independent of the old, but an unfolding of it. And whoever rejects or neglects the new uh, does not really possess the old. If we really have God's Spirit in us and possess old truths, we should be eager as the Bereans for new stuff. They receive with readiness the Word and search the Scriptures if it was so. And I'm asking you to do the same. And everything I've just told you about Jeremiah 30 and 31 is also found in Ezekiel 36, three dozen chapters, 36, and two dozen verses. Verse 24, that's easy to remember. He says, I'm going to gather you out of all nations, bring you into your own land, then I'm going to sprinkle clean water and you'll be clean and give you my spirit, put my spirit in you You'll uh, to walk in my statutes and judgments. You'll dwell in the land that I gave your fathers. Well, uh, we think we're going to stay here and get the Holy Spirit and convince the world. Well, I think at a certain point the door is going to be closed on uh, Protestant America that no longer protests and wants Sunday uh, to be with uh, Rome. Okay, And it's going to be bad news here. Uh, the map in Israel right now shapes uh, Israel as a speedboat, like an ark maybe. And, uh, and I think, uh, let's go where the boat is, because it's going to be like the days of Noah. And it's going to be bad. So uh, let's get our Bibles out, study, get ready, share uh, information with your friends. Uh, I just say this is uh, an opportunity, and it's not for them to know the times and seasons if they're not open. That that uh, that fits if the, uh, if they're not open to truth, but they're, we can know the times and seasons. That's what Paul implies if we do, and the uh, information uh, we've we've. By the way, Paul's statement talks about when they're saying peace and safety. That was the Iran nuclear deal in 2015, along with a lot of other things that happened in 2015. The sign, first of all, 2015, the biblical year begins in the spring. And on the equinox was a rare solar eclipse followed by a blood moon two weeks later on Passover. Uh, those signs should make us think of Joel 2.31. The sun will be darkened, moon turned to blood before the day of the Lord. Before the Hebrew word is panim, means face or facing. Facing the day of the Lord, the end time period. It's not like, well, um, the dark day in 1780 or the... Uh, uh, Lisbon earthquake, its uh, events in 2015 are facing the day of the Lord, if we can believe it. Okay, And uh, then the uh, Supreme Court had the temerity to uh, redefine marriage. In, uh, you know, the, in, in the Bible, it, it says in Leviticus uh, 18, verse 22, that to lie mankind, uh, as with womankind, is an abomination. And Mark 13, 14 says, uh, when you see an abomination standing where it ought not. Well, that was the Supreme Court. It ought, it had stand, that abomination had standing with the, what we call a Supreme Court, really not supreme at all. Okay, And uh, then the Pope was also standing where he ought not. He's the mother of abominations in Revelation 17, verse 5. The church is uh, a harlot, mother of abominations. Repre and the Pope represents that church. So... Um, Signs are fulfilled since 2015, and I believe that uh, with everything happening on sabbatical years like 2015, if you were to, um, by the way, come from 457 to 34 A.D. is 10 jubilees. That's 490 years. 49 times 10 is... Uh, jubilees came every 49 years because the 50th was number one of the next sequence. They were interlocking. So 490 years, 10 jubilees. Come 40 more. A 50 jubilees is the jubilee of jubilees in 1994 to 95, from 34 to 1994, and it was a sabbatical year. 95 was a jubilee year, and um, but if you realize that that was Pope John Paul went to the UN on the Day of Atonement, then 
20 years later, in 2015, Pope Francis also went to the UN on the Day of Atonement. So those 20 years are uh, when, when Peter says, don't be ignorant about a thousand years, a thousand years like a day, um, and a day is like a thousand years. If we put the Jubilees into a thousand, 490, 490 make 980, there are 20 years left over at the end, and that's uh, marked by the papal visits. So we're out of time. 2015 is the end of 6,000 years. And I think uh, next, uh, the, and those events happen as a warning. I think next sabbatical year is going to be big. I have another way of showing that, actually. And uh, we um, recently discussed uh, Joel 1, uh, verse 3 and 4. Four generations of Adventism, 40 years, 160 years. After that, this is what the palmer worm has left and eaten. The canker worm has, uh, what the palmer worm left, the canker worm ate. What the canker worm left, the caterpillar ate. What the caterpillar left, the locust ate. You know, four of them uh, might not have them in the right order, but that's the idea. Nothing left. And that's Adventism after what's coming, I believe, soon. We've had four generations, and if we don't wake up, uh, it's, it's going to be sorry. Because God is not wanting, uh, we have 20 million, we're looking for 21 or 2 billion, but... God is wanting 144,000 who will really do what he says, and we need to get our Bibles out and start studying. So thank you again. God bless you, and uh, please uh, share this. Uh, like it if you can. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little bit uh, heavy, but uh, you know, if we don't look at it now, we'll run from it later. Thanks a lot. God bless you.